thyroid function test. So before we discuss thyroid function test, let's learn the basic concept about the physiology. So in the physiology, we have pituitary and here is the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland. From pituitary comes the TSH. And from here comes the T4 and T3. And they have a negative feedback on TSH. Okay? And of course, we have a hypothalamus, H for hypothalamus, P for pituitary, T for thyroid. And from hypothalamus comes the thyroid dropping, releasing hormone. This is how the basic physiology goes. But what is, what is more important is TSH and T3, T4. If lesion occur in thyroid gland, then it is a primary disease. If the lesion occurs in pituitary, we call it as secondary disease. And the lesion occurs as hypothalamus, that is tertiary disease. So now let's talk about primary hypothyroid. The gland is not working properly. That means there is less formation of T3, T4 primary. Hypothyroid. T3, T4, the gland is not making T3, T4. The body will try to secrete more and more TSH. More and more TSH will try to increase T3, T4 synthesis. So the initial stage of primary hypothyroid, TSH will be increased, but T3, T4 will be normal. And this is known as subclinical hypothyroid. So TSH is increased. T3, T4 is normal is normal and this is known as subclinical hypothyroid. Okay? But in the very advanced stages, PSF will remain high but T3, T4 will be reduced. That is what we actually what we call as hypothyroid. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, you can, audience can hold. There's some problem. Just hold only for one minute. restart. So friends, subclinical hypothyroid raised TSH, normal T3, T4, but when we talk about primary hypothyroid, increase TSH, reduce T3, reduce T4. But if a disease is occurring in the pituitary gland, that is secondary hypothyroid, there is no TSH. So TSH will be reduced, T3, T4 will also will be reduced. This is what we call as secondary hypothyroid. The disease is occurring in the, in the pituitary gland. Suppose the body, uh, suppose the gland is secreting excess of hormone. So what you call as hyperthyroid and in the when the gland is secreting excess of hormone then T3 T4 will be increased and TSH will be reduced so primary hyperthyroid 
reduce TSH, increase T3, increase T4. Now what inference we are drawing? Okay, so TSH is the single best test to know about thyroid function, especially for hypothyroid, raised TSH is the classical feature that we talk about. Now, let's talk more about T3, T4. Main hormone, what come out of thyroid is T4. This is the main hormone. But the main active hormone is T3. T3 has a short half-life. T4 has a long half-life. Now, 80% of the T3 is made in the peripheral tissue by the iodinization. So by deiodination, T3 will be made in the peripheral tissues. So there are certain compounds or drugs which inhibit T4, T3 conversion. And this is a very, very important point. So drugs which reduce conversion of T4, T3, conversion, reduce conversion. They are number one, propranolol, number two, dexamethasone, number three, propyl thiouracil, you know it's an antithyroid drug, then high dose of IOD high dose of IOD. So they are the few drugs or compound which inhibit T4, T3 conversion. And I just told you, T3 is the main active hormone. That's why these drugs we specially use in thyrotoxicosis crisis. So in hyperthyroid crisis, we use all these drugs. Our idea is to have reduced T3 synthesis, right? Now, a few extra points I like to mention here is about propyl thiouracil. This is what drug, antithyroid drug. The other compound is carbimazole. Carbimazole. Now, propyl thiouracil and this carbimazole they belong to same group of the antithyroid drug. But what are the two differences? First of all, propyl thiouracil it does not cross placenta. It does not cross placenta. That's why it is a drug of choice in pregnancy with hyperthyroid. So drug of choice. Pregnancy with hyperthyroid. Okay. And second advantage that this has the quality of inhibiting T4 into T3 as discussed just now. And this is not done by carbimazole. That's why propyl thyroidacin is always a preferred drug. Second point I like to highlight about the high dose of iodine. It is not iodine, it is high dose of iodine. Iodine has got two effects on thyroid function. The first thing is, if you use low dose of iodine,
for a long period it lead to in, it lead to increase thyroid hormone synthesis and this is known as job based to effect but if we use high dose of iodine for a short period that inhibit thyroid hormone synthesis as well as it inhibit t4 t3 conversion also and this one is wolf jacob wolf jacob effect तो आयोडीन इन लो डोज लीड टू इंक्रीज थायराइड हार्मोन सिंथेसिस इंक्रीज एंड आयोडीन इन हाई अमाउंट ऑफ इट रिड्यूस थायराइड हार्मोन सिंथेसिस ओके तो दिस रिगार्डिंग रोल ऑफ आयोडीन इन थायराइड फंक्शंस टेस्ट नाउ वी टॉक अबाउट something very important is radio iodine uptake test radio iodine uptake test it is done now in this we use radioactive iodine maybe i131 or any any of this radioactive radioactive iodine uptake test in short we write as ray test in this we use any radio iodine maybe i131 or i123 at that is given orally But for the body, it is just an ordinary iodine. It does not differentiate ordinary iodine from radioactive iodine. But for us, we can come to know where this iodine is going. It is radioactive, so by gamma camera we can see where the iodine is going. So now, after say patient is given radio iodine today orally, the next day patient is thyroid gland. And this is the uptake, normal uptake, normal. And this is the thyroid gland, less uptake. This is hypothyroid. Now look at the gland. The gland is uniformly enlarged, and there is excess of uptake. excess of uptake diffuse increase uptake this is grave disease grave disease we have another gland we are getting one nodule and it is active is taking excess of iodine to so we call as toxic adenoma toxic adenoma and now we have multiple nodules active nodules we are taking taking extra uh, uptake this is known as toxic multi nodular goiter multi nodular goiter toxic multi nodal goiter and now we have one more thing cold nodule the uptake is by the gland and we are getting a cold nodule cold nodule means it is not picking up the 
three to two ID, but the rest of the gland is uptaking. Now, what are the causes of cold nodule? The cause of cold nodule are thyroid cyst, thyroid abscess, and thyroid cancers. Thyroid cancer are never hot. Most of thyroid cancer are cold. So now you have understood very clearly what is the meaning of grave disease in a uniformly enlarged gland with uniform increase of the toxic adenoma is a single nodule, multi-nodal goiter, and we have a cold nodule, cis abscess, or cancer. Okay. So in the next time, I will be talking to you about thyrotoxicosis. Till then, stay tuned to the uh, video lecture by me and thank you very much for watching this video and you can very well uh, you can very well send your question on messenger by joining our Facebook I will be too happy to reply to all your questions